Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now for those of you who are watching this and you're currently near 11, you already know that the English Literature Paper 1 exam is done, but of course you should be well in the process of preparing for the upcoming Literature Paper 2 exams that take place next Wednesday morning. Now, this video will be going over how you can write a grade 9 character response on inspector calls and more specifically let's say if the character question that came up was on inspector goal i will show you firstly how easy he is as a character to write about but equally what you can write in your grade nine response that includes relevant quotations context and themes now let's quickly talk about the literature paper two exams remember when it comes to inspector calls you always get a choice of two questions you get a theme question and a character question and in this lesson i'm going to be going over what you can include in a grade nine character response if you go for the character question let's say if inspector Gaul comes up okay and guys by the way this sunday uh mr sallies and i will be releasing our predictions for an inspector calls okay so let's go over how to write about Inspector Gould's character. He hasn't come up, he only came up, I believe, in the 2017 exam and he hasn't come up since as a character question, okay? So he's arguably a very strong contender for the character question. Now, when you think about Inspector Gould, he's a pivotal character, he serves as Priestley's mouthpiece. So, when you are writing about him, let's say he's the character that comes up in the final exams, in your introduction and your opening thesis statement, this is what you can talk about and what you can write about in your grade nine response on Inspector Gould's character. Remember firstly that Inspector Gould is presented by Priestley as an omniscient figure. Omniscient means godlike, everywhere all at once, okay? So he's an omniscient figure who is a catalyst for change. In other words, Inspector Gould, his appearance suddenly triggers the Burlings to change. Also, the characternym inspector, okay, remember a characternym is basically um, a name within a character that indicates something about who they are or indicates a distinctive quality about them, okay? So, Priestley uses this characternym inspector within the name Inspector Gaul to tell us that he will inspect the Burlings and unveil troubling secrets. And of course, by extension, what the inspector is doing is he is also inspecting Priestley's audience, okay, so Priestley's upper middle class and upper class audience, and also making them reflect on their actions, making them reflect on their greed, and also making them wonder, if I carry on the way I'm carrying on, will we still continue to sow the seeds of instability in British society that might lead us into the Third World War? Remember that Inspector Calls was initially released as a play in 1945. Britain had gone through two very destabilizing wars and Priestley was basically saying, look, if you don't change, we might well see a third world war. The other thing to include in your thesis statement if you're writing about Inspector Gould's character is his surname, okay? So you're really going for gold when you're talking about firstly the correct name, Inspector, but also the word Gould, because the surname Gould suggests to us that he has supernatural qualities. And of course, this also illustrates how he's Priestley's mouthpiece, okay? He's kind of this god, much like Priestley, who knows everything about all of the characters, but these supernatural qualities are what gonna trigger change within the Berlin characters. And finally, as I've mentioned, not only is he Priestley's mouthpiece, but he has a socialist message that he wants to impart to the play's audience, okay? So remember, in your thesis statement, make sure you mention that Inspector Gaul is an omniscient figure who serves as a catalyst for change and the character name Inspector tells us he will inspect the Burlings and unveil troubling secrets. Not only is he a supernatural figure as shown through his surname Gaul, but of course he serves as Priestley's mouthpiece in order to give us a socialist message for change and how Britain can stabilise only if it becomes socialist and shifts away from its capitalist underpinnings and its capitalist views. Your first grade nine paragraph relating to Inspector Gaul is firstly, make sure you make the point that he is a mysterious supernatural character who will unveil, as I've mentioned, the secrets of the upper classes. So not only does he unveil all of these secrets that the upper classes have, and more specifically, people like uh, Gerald and the Burlings, but by extension, the audience who are watching this, the people who, end of the Second World War, have the means to watch a play 
tended to be upper class people, okay? Remember, Britain is fresh out of war. Lots of people are kind of coming out of rationing. Therefore, the people who have the luxury of time, the leisure, but also the money to afford this play are rich audiences. So when the inspector is being presented to them, they also are expected to reflect on their own behavior, much like the way the Burlings and Gerald Croft is meant to reflect on, that they are supposed to reflect on their behavior. Now, in terms of the quotations, when you're talking about how he's a mysterious supernatural character, who will shatter the Burling's worldview. These are the following quotations to make in your first paragraph. Firstly, remember, in the stage directions, we're told that he speaks carefully. Again, here, he's being presented as almost this godlike figure. And then also, the surname Gore is really, really powerful because this suggests his supernatural character. He it also foreshadows the fact that he's going to disappear almost like a ghost. And the quotation, young woman, as well as the quote, lonely, half-starved, and millions and millions of Eva Smiths and John Smiths, once more, what he is doing for the Burlings and by extension Priestley's audience is he's showing them the really um, horrible and disconcerting realities that many people in the working class faced, uh, especially when they were not being paid equally, they were not given any kind of support in case they fell into homelessness. And so the worldview of Priestley's audience is shattered when they see this character of Eva Smith, okay? And of course, in terms of context for this opening point, when you're thinking about how he's a supernatural character who shatters the Burling's worldviews, mention contextually this illustrates Priestley's criticisms of the deep class divisions that existed in Edwardian society. Remember that the inspector is basically critiquing all the class divisions that happened and the deep um, divide between the few upper classes in uh, Edwardian society who basically held vast resources and they were totally oblivious to the suffering that the majority working class people faced. And this is shown, of course, through the shock that the Burlings experienced when they learned that Eva Smith was lonely and half starved. That's your first grade nine point. Of course, the second point you can talk about when you're writing about Inspector Gould's character is that he is used as the embodiment of socialism. Now, this paragraph, you should try to juxtapose Inspector Gould with Mr. Burling because he is a foil to the capitalist beliefs of Mr. Burling. The idea of a foil comes from drama and theater. A foil is basically a character that's used to show the shortcomings and the flaws of another character. Inspector Gore, being a socialist who believes in a more equal society, highlights the flaws in Mr. Burling's selfish capitalist worldview. Also, make sure that the inspector, to talk about how the fact that the inspector shows how the upper classes were very out of touch, they were myopic, but also they sowed the steeds of instability by continuing their behavior towards the poor, okay? So people like Mr. Burling, who were employers, factory owners, they didn't pay the workers enough to even live on, right? What this did is it sowed seeds of instability that created an unstable society, okay? So I think in this paragraph, what would be really powerful is when you juxtapose Inspector Gore as this person who's very socially conscious, he also represents Priestley's socialist ideals with Mr. Burling. And the quotations which you can use to juxtapose the characters is how the inspector says to Mr. Burling that public men have ellipsis responsibilities and this is in contrast to Mr. Burling's selfish capitalist worldviews, where he said that it's his duty to keep labor costs down, okay? So you're juxtaposing that showing how, on the one hand, Inspector Gore is quite selfless, and he also believes in the equality held in socialist principles, in contrast to Mr. Burling's greed. The second juxtaposition and the second set of quotes you can use to juxtapose the two characters is how on the one hand, in, uh, Inspector Gore believes that we're all members of one body. In contrast to Mr. Burling, he's very individualist because he's only thinking about his, quote, knighthood. And of course, also, we can see his selfishness and his individualism when he says the Titanic absolutely unsinkable, okay? So this quote, this second paragraph would be really powerful if you juxtapose how Inspector Gore is used as a foil to Mr. Burling. And of course, contextually, you want to tie it into Priestley himself being a socialist and his socialist message, both to the audience uh, who were watching this play at the time, post-1945, the Second World War has just ended, but also by extension, the British government. Of course, also the other contextual factor is to do with the two wars that Britain would have been through when this play was released. Remember, you had the First World War, 
that occurred between 1914 and 1918. The play is set two years before that war. And of course, when the play is actually released, it's in 1945 after the Second World War, which started in 1939 and ended in 1945. Priestley is basically saying, look, if we don't change and if we don't um, adopt a more socialist principle in our country, we're only going to have more wars. That's your second grade nine paragraph on Inspector Gore. The third, you finishing off strong, you want to now think about how he impacts Sheila and Eric because you can argue that Inspector Gore empowers the younger generation to drive social change. Remember, Priestley felt that the older generation, they were almost done, right? So, you know, society won't change. They really have a lot to gain from keeping society the same, whilst actually he had a lot of hope in the younger generation to drive change. So the inspector empowers the younger generation, and uh, this is shown through how he inspires Eric and Sheila to transform society. Now, what we can see here, and especially the quotations that illustrate this, is firstly, we can see that he really empowers Sheila, okay? So he tells uh, Sheila Burling's dad, Mr. Burling, that your daughter isn't living on the moon. What does this illustrate? This illustrates that Inspector Gore really sees the younger generation as a catalyst for change, not only towards social equality, but also feminist change. Remember that, of course, this play is set in a time when women did not have equal rights. Remember, women only got the right to vote in 1918. So also Priestley has a very strong feminist message in his play. Equally, when you're thinking about tying it to how Eric changes and also how Sheila changes, um, Inspector Gore says this to Sheila, but you can also arguably say that he just broadly mentions this to the young generation. Use the power you had. Of course, he says this to Sheila directly to criticize how she had Eva fired uh, from Millwoods, but more broadly, actually, he's speaking to both of them. They used the power that they had as children of upper middle class people in order to abuse people like Eva. Of course, you want to juxtapose how his, uh, the way he speaks to the younger generation sparks him to change because Sheila says, I started it, she takes a lot of social responsibility and equally, Eric also agrees, you lot may be letting yourselves out nicely, but I can't. Now here, this paragraph tries to make it a theme paragraph and this is tied to the theme of age and more specifically when you're writing about the theme of age, remember that what Priestley was trying to illustrate through this theme is that the younger generation would be the ones that would drive social change. They had a lot to benefit from society becoming more equal, but equally Priestley had very, very little hope in the older generation, i.e. Mr. and Mrs. Burling, for driving social change, okay? His optimism is emphasized through how the inspector ins uh, inspires both Sheila and Eric to change. And of course, what this is illustrating is Priestley's message that it's the younger generation who are going to drive Britain to change towards being an equal society. So guys, I hope that helped. If you decide to go for the character question and if the character that comes up is Inspector Gore. I feel like he ha there's a really, really strong possibility that Inspector Gore will come up. So this is the grade nine response that you can write. And also guys, what I've included in the description box is literally a free download link if you wanted to have slightly more information on context themes, um, also a free model response. Look at that link, download it, and hopefully that will help you towards your GCSEs. So guys, there's gonna be an Inspector Calls a GCSE prediction video coming out on Sunday. If you've also found this video helpful, let me know, and I'm more than happy to do some grade nine paragraph examples for the rest of the characters within the play. Thank you so much, guys, for listening.